hey, this is Justin. I just wanted to give you a little bit more of a uh, trust in the Word of God and how the, how the Word of God is relevant even still to this day. Now, I'm going to talk about what happened in the book of Daniel, chapter 2. We're going to talk about prophecy and history and how God predicted uh, major uh, world events and, and world superpowers that were to come. Those of you who don't know this story, uh, the man on the left is King Nebuchadnezzar. He was the king of Babylon at that time. And the one on the right there, that is Daniel the prophet. So Daniel, in, as in Daniel, the book of Daniel in the Bible. And what ended up happening is the king had a real bad night. He couldn't sleep. He had a terrible nightmare about a metal man. And this metal man had a head of gold, chest and arms of silver, as you can see there, and a belly and thighs of bronze or brass. And he had long legs of iron. And then the feet, which are kind of, in the illustration, is kind of clouded there. The feet were of iron and clay mixture. And... Basically what happened is the king got all ticked off because he called in his wise guys and they couldn't answer his question. He said, listen, I want you guys to give me the dream because I can't remember it. And I want you to give me the interpretation of the dream. And all the wise guys that were awake at that time, because it was in the middle of the night, said, oh king, only the gods know the answer to this. So the king got a little upset. He ended up putting out a death decree for all of the wise men in all of Babylon. And unfortunately, uh, Daniel was grouped in that group. And so, Daniel uh, got the death decree, came to his door basically, and he said, hey, Daniel, we got to kill you. And he said, whoa, 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 let me talk to the king. And he went to the king and he said, hey, king, please don't lob off any heads just yet. Let me pray to my God. Let me sleep on this. And in the morning, I will have an answer for you. And that's exactly what he did. And so what ended up happening, what ended up happening was Daniel, the next morning, sat down and talked to the king. And I'm, I'm reading from uh, Daniel chapter 2, verse 31. It says, You, O king, were watching, and behold, a great image, this great image whose splendor was excellent, stood before you, and his form was awesome. This image this image's head was of fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, and its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. You watched while a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron and the clay and the bronze and the silver and the gold were crushed together and because, like chaff from the summer threshing floors, the wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. If you continue reading on there uh, from Daniel 2, chapter, thir chapter 2, uh, verse 36, Daniel continues and starts describing them, describing these kingdoms. And this, for example, is one of them. He says... This is a little bit of the, the interpretation. He says, You, O king, are the king of kings, for the God of heaven has given you kingdom and power and strength and glory. You are this head of gold. Okay, so, so here's, here's what happened. So the interpretation that God gave Daniel, Daniel in turn gave it to King Nebuchadnezzar, this is what happened. King Nebuchadnezzar was this head of gold. And being the head of gold, um, Babylon actually ruled from 612 B.C. to 539 B.C. And this, as you see in the background, this is uh, a head, or this is an image of what's known as the winged lion of Babylon. That was actually their royal, that was their symbol. The Babylonian symbol was a winged lion. But then after Babylon, something happened. The, per, the Persians and the Medes were not strong enough to take over Babylon by themselves. So... They came together as the Medo-Persian Empire. And General Cyrus actually ran uh, all, the entire army up to Babylon. And what they did, the only way they could conquer them, was they diver diverted the river Euphrates away from the town, from, from Babylon, and they just walked under the city walls, conquered Babylon in a night. It was crazy. 
Amazing. I would, I would highly encourage you to read up on this. The next kingdom, by the way, the, the Persians were the, the silver. Uh, they were the silver, the, the chest and arms of silver. And the Medo-Persian Empire ruled from 539 B.C. to 331 B.C. And the next one was Greece. Greece was known as, the, the, they were the bronze, uh, the, the bronze kingdom. I mean, they, because of Alexander the Great, they just conquered the world in no time flat because of their um, military might, their uh, power, because of Alexander and his wonderful uh, and amazing uh, military strategies and so forth. And they ruled from 331 B.C. to 168 B.C. And they were known as, the, they were the next kingdom in this prophecy. And the next kingdom was a very interesting kingdom. It was Rome. Rome was, and still is known, they're, they're the Iron Kingdom. I mean, because when they conquered, they conquered with iron swords. I mean, they really mastered metallurgy. And they were able to just wipe out the land. I mean, it took them a while, but they were able to wipe out the land. They were able to become the, white, the world's superpower. And in fact, they were actually the world's superpower when Jesus was crucified on a Roman cross. Interesting. So the next kingdom, the fourth kingdom to come, was Rome, and they were the Iron Kingdom. And they ruled from 168 B.C. to, se uh, to, to 476 B.C. I'm sorry, A.D. 168 B.C. to 476 A.D. Now, when it came to Rome, Rome was never conquered. Look it up. Rome was never conquered. Rome split and turned into the ten, well, actually, the primarily eight uh, European nations today. And notice, Europe has never cleaved one to another again. You read about that in the book of Daniel. Now, that, the last, the, that last kingdom, when it talks about the stone that was carved out of the mountain, that stone is Christ's kingdom. That was kingdom of Christ. His kingdom will rule forever. And his kingdom, as when his kingdom comes down, all those other kingdoms will be, will be crushed by the, the stone, the rock. Jesus is called the rock. He is the foundation stone by which we believe. And Christ is the one that's going to come down. It's his second coming that this is predicting. Now, I am not a betting man. I'm not. But if I were, let, let's just, let's put, the predictions here together okay let's let's do some statistical probability here okay Babylon was there obviously God predicted the next kingdom Medo-Persia was going to come it was an inferior kingdom and it was it was two small kingdoms that came together and took over Babylon by a fluke God predicted that then Greece came about Greece came about and they took over the, the Medo-Persian Empire. God predicted that. Then after Greece, Rome conquered Greece. But here's the interesting thing. Rome conquered Greece, but Rome was never conquered, just as the prophecy predicted. And that was divided Rome. That's the feet of iron and clay, and they don't mix together. Now, I bring this up to say this. I bet, once again, I'm not a Ben man, I bet you that if those five worked out exactly as God said, the probability of that final kingdom coming into play, that's a huge probability. We have 100% success rate. Now, I say all, the, all of this to just bring this up. Book of Revelation, chapter 14 this is the first message of what is known as the three angels' messages. I'm just going to start in verse 7 of chapter 14 in the book of Revelation. It says, Fear God and give glory to Him, for His hour has come. And His judge, I'm sorry, for His judgment has come. And worship Him who made heaven and earth and sea and the springs of waters. This is my point. The Bible is relevant today because that sixth and final kingdom has not yet come come. You've got a choice before you today. Are you going to choose to follow him? The one who made these predictions? 
Or are we going to follow ourselves and we're going to decide our own fate? God, praise God, He gives us that choice. You have that choice before you today. Now I'd like to say a, a, a personal thanks for BibleProphecyTruth.com for allowing me to use these pictures. Uh, click on, go there if you guys want to get the full story and the full scope of this. But this has been Justin from Biblical Chile giving you the tools to help you walk the talk in your Christian life.